It is time for us to get into the word. I'm excited about the word that God has for us today. And I'm praying that your hearts are ready, your mind is open to receive from God. Can I get an amen? Amen, amen. Um, we're just going to open the word today, and I believe that it's already blessed. Uh, before, we, before we start, I just have a question for you. Um, the, the title of our sermon today is called Take a Little Extra. All right? Take a little extra. You could put that in the chat if you would like. Take a little extra. Amen? I don't know. If you are like me, I want to know, or do, am, am I in the same room with somebody out there? If you're like me, I love all things extra. Is there anybody else who's like me? I love everything that has, extra is such a great word. It's such a great concept. Uh, take a little extra is music to my ears. Um, yes, would you like more toppings? Yes. Would you like an extra helping? Uh, yeah. Um, would you like more uh, extra money? Yes, I would. Uh, would you like a little more time, some extra time to work on that project? Why, yes, I do. I love all things extra. Can somebody put extra in the chat? Take a little extra is an amazing concept. I even like, is any saints with me who like ch Chipotle? You got the Chipotle ministry in your heart. And when you get through the whole line, what do they say at the end? Do you want guacamole and sour cream? And you're like, why, yes, I do. And then what do they say? Well, that'll be extra. I don't care. Give me, char give me five, charge me $5 for that guacamole and sour cream. I don't care. I like extra. Extra is an, is an amazing anointing, and I want it all. Um, being extra. Have you ever heard of that term? Being extra is a personality trait used in the black vernacular to describe someone who's doing too much in a particular situation. How many of you have uh, been a little extra before? Do you know anybody who's a little extra? Can I get a witness? Does there, right, raise your hand if it's you. You know what? I can be a little extra sometimes. Well, praise the Lord, so can I. I like being a little extra. A little extra could do you good. Sometimes it calls to be extra. Extra is a great personality trait to have. Sometimes you got to sit down, but sometimes it's okay to be a little extra. A little extra is good. And I have a scripture. I have scripture to back it up. Being extra is actually biblical. And I'm going to prove it to you today in our passage today that we're going to talk about. We're talking about the parable of the ten bridesmaids. It's found in Matthew 25. So go ahead and get your Bibles out. Open your Bible apps. Turn to your electronic Bible. If you're at home, you got a paper Bible. Turn to Matthew 25. And I'm going to prove to you that being extra, taking a little extra, is actually a biblical concept. Praise the Lord. Um, before we hop into this parable, I want to give a little context to where it is. This, con this parable lands right in the middle of a discourse Jesus was giving about the end times. Jesus was telling people what it would be like when he came back. Because y'all do know Jesus is coming back. Do y'all remember that, saints? I don't know if anyone grew up in church in the 80s, but that was like a big thing in the 80s. The Left Behind series, Image of the Beast, Mark of, all that. Remember all those movies that scared us half to death? Like any moment we were expecting the Lord's return, but somehow I don't know where, the, where we got lost. And no one's really talking about the second coming of Jesus. But I just want to remind the saints that Jesus is coming back. Maranatha, come soon, Lord Jesus. So Jesus is in the middle of this discourse about what it would be like in the end times and what to expect when he's coming back. And he gives this story about a wedding processional. It's a story of a wedding. It's, it's, um, in, more, in other translations, it's called the parable of the ten virgins. In this 
uh, passage that I'm reading from the New Living Translation, they put, it's the parable of the bridesmaids. And I love that. I love a good wedding. Um, you know, weddings are fun. You could just imagine all these, these ladies are dressed up and looking cute. They're getting ready for it now. In these times in Middle Eastern tradition, weddings could last for weeks. And it was like a big deal. The, it, the bridegroom, the, the, the groom who was about to get married would have all these, this big parade, a profe- processional with his friends and all this. And he would like have a parade through the street and they would all get all the people and they would go to his house. And so we pick up this story with these bridesmaids getting ready for this processional. You know, they look cute. Their hair is done. They got their lashes on. Their nails look cute. They got their taffeta uh, wedding uh, bridesmaid dress on. Like, they ready. They are excited. You can tell they giggling and, you know, got their little shoes and their heels on. And they are waiting for the bridegroom. Now, it was important in that day for everyone to have their own lamp. To have their own lamp because it was dark, of course. There was no street lights back then. So you had to have your own lamp or you would just be in the dark. And that was the that was like the cue to let you into the party. Like you, that you weren't just a wedding crasher, that you didn't just come along in the processional along the way. But you had a lamp, which means, okay, that's like your RSVP. You're in. Come on in. Right? So let's pick it up. We're in um, Matthew 25. I'm going to start at verse 1. I'm in the New Living Translation, and it reads as follow. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough olive oil for their lamps. But the other five were wise enough to take along extra oil. Can someone say extra oil? Can you please put into the chat extra oil? The wise ones took along extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became very drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by by the shout. Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please, give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, We don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. It was a little savage over here. All right, go and get some for yourselves. Verse 10, but while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him into the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, the five bridesmaids returned. They stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe me, I don't know you. So you too much keep watch. So you too must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. May God bless his word. Come on, let's talk about this little parable that tells us about extra. Like I said, the bride, the bridesmaid were all on this same level playing ground. Like at first, they're, they're all, it's all the same thing. They're, they're all cute. They're all dressed up. They were all expecting to go to this party. They were all um, had their lamps. They all brought lamps. There was a common denominator to all this. They all had lamps. They were all expecting. And check it out. They all fell asleep. They all got drowsy. You know, I've heard messages like, you got to stay woke from this. Well, they all went to sleep. There is no harm. God wants us to get rest, praise the Lord. They all went to sleep. But... One group was deemed wise and the other was foolish. Something happened between expectation and reality. Something happened. There was a delay. Someone say delay. How are you with delays? How do you handle delays? 
I think this last week, we just went through the longest delay I have ever witnessed in my whole voting life. Usually, you know, it takes just a day. You know, you know the results by the end of the night. But this took four days, saints. How was your, how was your process? How did you handle the delay that you just went through in this election? How do you handle buffering when you're trying to watch your Netflix series? or you're trying to do some work on your computer. How do you handle traffic? I just wanna know, how do you handle delay? How do you handle bad news? When you have all things lined up and then there's a delay, there's a pause, there's a wait a minute, there's a we can't go forward. I wanna know how do you handle delays because we see these, brides, these bridesmaids uh, ran into a delay. They were all ready, but the bridegroom took his time. He was delayed. This parable gives us wisdom for what to do in delayed seasons of your life. Amen? Because all of us have them. All of us have delayed seasons in our lives. You've done all the things You've gone to the schools, you got the degree, you got the certificate, you did all the things, you got on that online dating app. You've gone, on, you're doing all the things. And then you're just waiting for it to happen. I've done my part, but why is there a delay? Can I get a witness? Is there anybody who is in the virtual room who knows what it feels like to live in seasons of delay? to live in times where things don't make sense, to when you're wondering, when is this going to happen? When is my partner coming? When is this job gonna happen for me? When is my finances gonna get better? Why is there a delay? I'm doing all I can, but I'm in a season of delay. This is why this parable is gonna help us today. Because in seasons of delay, there was something that the wise women did that the foolish women didn't. Let's look at what the wise women did. There's three things that the wise do. In seasons of delay, the wise will, one, invest a little extra into their expectation. Did you hear me? The wise will invest a little extra into what they are expecting. They were expecting to go to a party, to have fun, to be a part of this wedding uh, recession, processional. They were ready to feast and have a good time. That was their expectation. So they brought a little extra along with their expectation. You know, you're going to have to invest a little bit in your seasons of delay. I love that these women had an expectation, but they put a little something to the side just in case. They had a contingency plan. Amen. Someone say contingency plan. A contingency plan is a plan designed to take a possible future, designed to, to take on a, a possible future event or circumstance into account. You take into account something might happen. It's a contingency plan. This is what these ladies had. They had a moment where they were like, well, just in case, let's take a little extra. My question today is, do you have a contingency plan for your faith? Do you have a contingency plan in your spiritual life? Have you accounted for the fact that things might not go the way you planned? Did you take into account or put a little faith away or put a little peace away or put a little joy away just in case things don't go your way? Do you have a contingency plan for your faith? This is what these wise bridesmaids teach us today to have a little something to decide a contingency plan you know our a lot of times in our lives things don't make sense things don't line up and then we're very disappointed we're hurt we're wondering like what's happening our faith gets shaken but i want to encourage you today that with your faith to always take into account, you know what, just in case things go sideways, I'm going to put a little extra 
away. We're going to get more into it in just a minute. Now, that's what the wise did in seasons of delay. Look at what the foolish do in seasons of delay. We all go through seasons of delay. The wise put up a little extra and have a contingency plan. Foolish people live in the here and now. They get caught up in the moment, and they don't ever think about what if. This is what separated the wise bridesmaids from the foolish ones. The foolish ones was like, it's a party. Let's go. I got everything I need. I got a, my cuteness. I got a lamp. Let's get it. But they failed to plan ahead. They lived in the moment. They got caught up in the moment. They did not have a just in case. I want you to check out verse 6. All right, we're still in Matthew 23. Check out verse 6 through 9. What happened? When they wake up, the bridegroom is coming. Someone came and was like, hey, the bridegroom's on his way. Y'all get ready. It's about to happen. Verse 6 says, at midnight, they were rose by the shout. The, the bridegroom's coming. Come and meet him. It's all, it's, it's all good. Verse 7, all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. The five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some oil for our lamps are going out. Now check out the response in verse 9. The others reply, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some yourselves. Like I said earlier, that's a, that's a little savage. They was like, you know what, um, it's a no for me. And I love this because you know what they teach us in the late seasons? When you're wise, you set and hold healthy boundaries. Come on, say that with me. Set and hold healthy boundaries. These women were not having it. They said, we got enough. We took into account of our expectations. We invested into it. Now I got to set a boundary and I'm going to have to hold it because you got to know what you can afford to give and what you can't afford to give. Come on, there's some things in our lives that you can afford to give, and then there's some that you just can't afford. A lot of things are not, you can't, they're, 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 it's cost too much. Your peace, your joy, your sanity, your mental health. There's some things you can afford to give away, and there's some things where you have to say, you know what, I can't save everybody else. I'm going to have to lean into some self-care for myself before I could give away to others. I love these wise bridesmaids because they set their boundaries and they held on to it. They didn't let the needs, the other people's lack of preparation mess up the future of their expectation. You know, a lot of people, they'll do that into your life. Their, their, their lack of preparation becomes your, your emergency. And that's when we have to have boundaries to be like, wait a minute, where, where, where were, what, what did you do along the way before we even got to this point where now you're pulling on my peace of mind, you're pulling on my joy, you're pulling on my peace. I want you to notice that the oil, it required an investment. They had to go buy it. They had to go get it for themselves. The oil wasn't free. The wise people took that in, in account. They invested into it. It wasn't free. It requires something. And can I just say on a side note that the anointing, the thing that you want in life, it's going to cost you something. And I'm not talking about monetarily, but it's going to cost you an investment. And the, the foolish women did not, were not willing to pay the cost for their expectation. And in that doing so, they were trying to pull on somebody else's hopes and dreams. The foolish learned the hard way that you can't live off of anybody else's hopes and dreams. You can't live on other people's expectations. And check this out. You can't live on anybody else's faith. I know grandmama took you to church. I know your mama and your grandfather, your dad, your uncles, your pastors, they all tell you about Jesus. They all, you know, took you and showed you the way. But do you know that you cannot, you cannot live off of anybody else's faith? These foolish women wanted to live on what other people had invested into. 
that they didn't make the same investment. And I want to say this about your faith. Your faith is something that is yours solely to invest into and to keep. You can't live off this faith. You have to know it for yourself. Let me tell you, COVID has made us do a serious oil check in our lives. We got to check the oil levels in our lives because COVID made us realize, do I have enough oil to make it through this pandemic? Do I have enough oil to homeschool? Do I have enough oil to work from home? Do I have enough oil for myself spiritually to make it through a pandemic without attending church physically? Do I have enough oil in my life that I can still have a steady and consistent relationship with God even in a pandemic? Come on, it's an intentional thing. This is what we are learning from the wise and from the foolish. What can we learn from this parable? There is such, there's so many truths in this parable. What can we really take away? And I want you to know that in seasons of delay, you have a choice to be wise or to be foolish. Remember, we all go through seasons of, de of delay. We all go through times in our lives where things don't add up. They don't look right. It looks like, remember in the story, the bridegroom, we ready to get in. He's taking his time. He's getting all fresh. I don't know what took the bridegroom so long. But there are times in our lives where we have to wait. And you have a choice in those times to wait, whether to be wise or foolish. Remember, to be wise, you must invest a little extra into your expectation. You got to have a contingency plan for your faith. You got to set and hold healthy boundaries. That's how, you, that's how you're wise in times of delay. But foolish people, they out here living for the here and now without a plan. They live off of other people's faith and they miss out on their expectations. At the end of the story, they went and bought, they tried to prepare too late. And by the time they got back, the, the RSV, RSVP section was closed, VIP was closed. They wouldn't let nobody else in. So they missed out on their expectation. That's what happens if we live foolishness. Now, live foolishly. The question today is, which one are you? Which one of you in this season, in this pandemic, while we wait, while we are on delay, are all of our lives are delayed, are put on pause, are put on hold? How are you living in this season of delay? Will you be wise or will you be foolish? Which one do you want to be? I just want to admonish you, don't run out of oil. Don't run out of oil spiritually. This is such an important point. We can't run out of oil. Come on, put that in the chat. Don't run out of oil. Don't run out of oil. Saints, don't run out of oil. I have good news. There is no oil shortage. We're not, we're not living in the, in the age of, of, of shortages. Our God is not a God of scarcity. We serve a God of abundance. The good news is that there is no shortage of oil. The Holy Spirit gives oil abundantly. The problem is you have to invest to get into this oil. You have to invest something. You have to invest your life. You have to invest some time. This oil represents the Holy Spirit. The oil is always a representation, oil and fire is always a representation of the Holy Spirit. How much are you leaning in to the Holy Spirit in this time? How much are you leaning in to the one who promises to be a comforter, to be a guide, to be a counselor? The one who is able to set you on fire, set your passions on fire. The one who will lead you into all truth. How much are you daily asking and leaning into the help of the Holy Spirit? Saints, don't run out of oil. You want to know, like, you want to have, like, a good oil, you know, you need an oil change, you need an oil check. 
How many of you ever had a car that just, you destroyed a car because you never changed the oil? That's been me before. Um, sometimes you have to check your oil. Let me, let me know how, let, I can let you know how you can check your oil levels. How do you know you're leaning, leaning into the Holy Spirit? Is check by in Galatians 6, the fruit of the Spirit. How much love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance are exuding from your life. These are things that only the Holy Spirit can produce in your life. The flesh, the things of the flesh are completely opposite. This is how you can have an oil check. The light, the lamps that they were having, it represents revelation. It represents illumination. That's something that only the Holy Spirit can give you. It, without it, you're in the dark. Without it, you're walking through this pandemic in the dark. Without it, you're, you, you don't know what to do, where to go, which way to turn. You're completely in the dark, bumping your head, hurting yourself, running into things because you're in the dark, because you need the illumination of the Holy Spirit. This is why we need the oil. We have to lean into this. This is a very intentional part of our faith. Will you have enough oil to make it through seasons of delay? To make it through questionable times? To make it through silent times? Did you check the story? The bridegroom never even told a reason why he was late. <laughs> he never even gave an explanation. He was just delayed. Who knew what he was doing? That wasn't their job to know what the bridegroom was doing. Their job was to be ready. And if you haven't picked up on it by now, in this story, the bridegroom is Jesus, and we are the bride, the, we are the bridesmaids. This is a symbolic, it's symbolic of who we are. Will we be ready when Jesus returns? Will we live a life that is ready? and looking and expecting for the Savior to come into our lives? Or are we living our lives foolishly? You know, when you make a decision for Jesus, it's a great start. It's a great start. If you say a prayer, that's a great start. You join a church, great start. But in order to last in this Christian life, you got to invest into your faith spiritually. You have to Put a little extra on your faith. Come on, somebody say, put a little extra. You got to put a little extra on your faith. This is not one of those things that you could just coast and just drift. You ever notice, like, if you were at a, to um, dock a boat at, at a shoreline, if you don't anchor it, if you don't put some intention into tying up that boat and you just let the boat do nothing, it will just drift away. This is what happens in our Christian faith sometimes because we, we don't, we're not putting enough um, intentionality on it. So I, this is what I'm leaning into. I want to put a little more intentionality into my faith. I want to put a little extra on it. I don't want to just do the bare minimum. I don't want to just have enough to make it through the day. I don't want to just barely make it through this pandemic. I don't want to just barely make it through my day. I want to have a little extra. And even with that, with that extra, I want to have a, a little extra to give to someone else, not just to hoard it all for myself. What does a little extra look like? It looks like being intentional, like I said, with our faith. A little more time with God. A little more time in God's word. A little more time of worship. A little more time taking prayer walks doing some meditation throughout the day uh, with scripture, taking time, just, you know, five minutes here and there. I'm going to just do a little, I'm not going to do the bare minimum. I could just coast through my day and just fill my timeline with on social media and just look at the news all day and just, you know, listen to trap music and hip hop and do all my things. So I love all those things too. But there has to be some intentionality in my faith where I'm putting a little extra on it. I'm going to have a little extra oil. I'm not just going to barely make it through. You know, especially black folks, where you at? I know y'all know about, you know, being oily. We need to be oiled up. You could go outside if you want to, 
with no lotion or no oil, and you're going to be looking ashy out here. You know, we don't like being ashy. Now, just translate that into our spiritual lives. We have to be oily. We got to put something on it. You have to be intentional if you want to make it to our expectation. What is our expectation? Our expectation is Jesus. Our expectation is to to be in his presence, to live in his presence, to be ready when he comes. That's our expectation. If that's your expectation, what are you investing into your expectation? Come on, we're going to put a little extra on it. This week, I want to charge you to put a little extra on it. Take a little time to sit with God. Take a little time to pray, just five more minutes. Take a little time to start memorizing scriptures that will help you through the day. If you're worried or, you know, anxious or find scriptures that will match what you're, you need more peace you're dealing with revenge or anything like that, find scriptures to match that. Put a little extra on it. Take some time and put on some worship music. God, I'm just going to worship you for five minutes before I get started or before I end my day. A little extra on it. The bottom line of this message is that Jesus is coming back. That is a fact. Jesus is coming back for us as a church capital C church but Jesus is also coming back for you Jesus is coming back for me Jesus is coming back for all of us collectively but Jesus could come for you at any time this is this is what we're leaning into this is the bottom line and the Bible says we don't know when if you were to read this full discourse we don't know when Jesus is coming back the church in Thessalonica They were concerned. They were like, well, when is Jesus coming back? And you got to remember, that was over 2,000 years ago. When is Jesus coming back? Why why is there a delay? When, When will he appear? That's not our business, what the bridegroom is doing. Our charge is to be ready. We don't know when Jesus is coming back, but Jesus did tell us. Jesus did tell us when. You want to know? Y'all looking at me, y'all leaning in. Y'all. Jesus did t- say when he would come back. You want to know when? It will be when you least expect it. That's what the word says. Jesus is coming like a thief in the night. In all of these parables in um, Matthew 24, 25, 26, the end result of every parable was like, well, you don't know when the Son of Man will appear. You don't know. It will be when you least expect it. So this is our prayer. I want to make up my mind. I want to make up my mind to say, whenever the Lord comes for me, that I'll be ready. In seasons of delay, I'll stay ready. I will put a little extra into my spiritual life to keep my fire going. And keep my light shining. I will not run out of oil. But I'm going to take a little extra with me. Come on, somebody say extra oil. Somebody say take a little extra. Take a little extra with me. I just want to close with a time of prayer. Just want to have a time for us just to reflect on what God is saying to us in this parable. For us to be wise people who invest into our expectation, who have a contingency plan for our faith, who set and hold boundaries. Come on, will you just pray with me today? God Almighty, we give you praise. We thank you for your word that you prepare us for every season of life. There's a time to sing, a time to dance, a time to rejoice, a time to mourn, a time to cry. And then there are times of delay when we just have to wait on you and trust in you. A lot of us are sitting in that place right now. A lot of us are sitting in the tension of believing you and not seeing the reality of it come to pass. So, Lord, we're praying for all of us in this season. 
that you would help us to be wise to invest into our spiritual lives, to get the oil that we need from the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we say come. We say come into our lives. We know you have oil freely that you want to pour out. You said you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh. So God, we receive the power of the Holy Spirit to be witnesses for you, to be on fire for you, to be shining lights for you in this dark world. God, we will not run out of oil because we will daily invest into a little extra. Every day, God, let us spend some time with you, a little extra time, just a little. You're not asking for like just little increments. Those ladies did not bring a gallon of oil. They just had a little bit. They just took a little extra to keep the light going, to keep our fire burning for you when it gets dark. And God, I just, I just pray for those who are listening who maybe don't even know who you are. God, I just thank you for people who are making a decision to follow you who are making uh, making a decision to say, you know what, I want to be ready when Jesus comes for me. We don't know when you will come. We don't know when you will come for us personally. But God, we say we want to be ready. We want to live ready. We want to live with oil. We don't want to burn out in our Christian lives. We don't want to give up. We don't want to throw in the towel. God, will you help us to come to you and get oil, the oil that we need to make it through seasons of delay. We love you, God, and we believe it is so. God, we thank you for all that you're going to do in our lives. Even this week, as we do a little extra every day, meet us in amazing ways. We love you, and we thank you. In Jesus' name.